this would be the first time I've pulled the combo off with Axis of Mortality. I haven't won many games with this, but I will take this exchange. Take. Oh, swap the life round. I'm on to 11. He's on to 2. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to the channel. For today's jank video, we are going to be focusing on Sarah the Benevolent, which has the incredible ult of you get an emblem with, if you control the creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than 1 reduces it to one instead. Now, the whole point of this deck is to absolutely exploit this as much as possible with as much creature creation as we can. So we have three Outlaws Merriment in the deck, three Castle Arden Veils so we can always create creatures immediately. We have Sky Knight Vanguard, just as a quick little uh, two drop whenever it attacks, it creates some creatures. Uh, some removal like Banishing Light, Sky Cave Apparition, Seize the Spoils, anything like that. And the way we win, if our opponents just, you know, decide they don't want to concede because they realize there's absolutely no way that they can kill us, is we have two especially spicy ways to win. I mean, one is Ulamog, maybe not the spiciest, but the second is Axis of Mortality, a six mana enchantment that reads at the beginning of your upkeep, you can exchange two target players' life totals. So the sort of janky way that we can win this is if our life total can't go below one, it's going to sit at one. Then at the beginning of our upkeep, we can just swap our life total with our opponent take them down to one from whatever they may be at, and then just be able to get one point of damage through, which can also happen with Outlaw's Merriment, as it does have the chance of making a 1-2 creature, which when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. This Planeswalker only needs to survive for a singular turn before you can actually get the emblem off, so we run four of them in the deck, and yep, as soon as you reach that, it's pretty much game over. So I do hope you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below if you're not already, and let's just get straight into the games. So I go on first, did just do a little mulligan, though I am liking what I am seeing. Just so we make sure that we don't regret our decisions by dropping off a land. Gonna go ahead and keep three. Because nothing's worse than a mulliganing, dropping off a land thinking, oh, I'll draw through to it. And then you just don't. <laughs> and it loses you the game. No, we want to see at all with Ulamog. Though at least we do have Vanishing Light in well, available and ready to play. If he is playing the, I think it's the Moon Sage, the, the Is It deck, where whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell, you know, target creature gets base power and toughness of three. He shocks that in, so I'm gonna presume counter spell. Gonna seem strange, but just judging by the matchup, Is It don't tend to have two, I mean, I know it's gonna get countered, don't tend to have too much direct damage, so I would rather keep the Outlaw's Merriment in play, like actually be able to get this to hit the battlefield. Because against a control deck, having consistent creatures being able to be created is pretty awesome because they're gonna board wipe, they're gonna, I don't know, just remove all of your stuff. And as long as you can still carry on making creatures and it does do stand for a better chance of actually succeeding. Cycling the shot, Nado, just so he can deal one point of damage to the Planeswalker. I respect it, I respect it. What's going to be next turn, though? Have you got a second one? Shocking in for Teferi. Yeah. I mean, he's going to plus. He's, no way he minuses threes after attacking. So hopefully he doesn't have another Dovin's Veto in hand, and we can just Banishing Light the Teferi. Always a satisfying feeling. So actually... Let's go ahead and try to get this to resolve. First of all, it does... Thankfully, I mean, he might have a bounce spell for Banishing Light or Enchantment Removal, we're just going to have to see. Though, Sarah is now on 7, so as long as he doesn't buff it up, or have shocks, I mean, who am I kidding, he's, he's going to have something. We actually might be able to get this ult off. Just doing for the 1 damage. Anger of the Gods. Whoops, my friend, that does not hit planes <laughs> for, because I mean, he's just going to concede. Because he knows as soon as it goes to our turn and we hit the emblem, we've won the game. But oh, that's fantastic. Misreading the card. I'm sorry, Chaos Punk. Good game. We're going first with Unfortunate Lands a little bit. I mean, actually not, I lie. We can drop this down for tap. This is technically a play into the Castle Arden Veil. I'm going to come in untapped. Playing against an Elspeth deck with Elspeth card sleeves. Very nice indeed. I am liking our hand. We've got some damage and life gain, some card draw, and of course the MVP Outlaws Merriment. Let's just see what he has in store for us. Lanoir turn one, uh, not Lanoir Elf, Soul Warden. No. No Luminarch Ascendant, whatever it's called. Don't really remember. The other one mana 
One mana. Whoa, one mana, one, one. That whenever a creature enters the battlefield, they gain a life, whatever. Mono white decks doing mono white deck things. So. No, Caesar's Balls. I was going to say, it wouldn't be a terrible time to do it because we can always Lightning Helix whatever he might play. Though I will just. Uh, I think in the grand scheme of things. Drawing some cards and creating some treasures is better. Are you just gonna turn three resplendent angel Heliod? Just were you just really unfortunate on your draws? Did you keep a hand of seven that you shouldn't have kept? No, you're a human deck. Two mana one one. Are you I mean <laughs> sure, that was the strangest turn I've ever seen. Drop Thalia's Lieutenant, but whenever another human enters the battlefield, put a one one count on Thalia's Lieutenant. So, I'm um, just gonna Outlaw's Merriment, I think. It's probably a good time. I mean, it isn't only once per turn, so if you can drop... Oh. That's not good. So, for that, payback must be had, I do believe. I was gonna say, if he can drop two humans in one turn, that would be uh, enough to get... Lightning Helix. No, we need to drop three humans actually. Do you have another? Oh, wow, bro, this guy, this man has all of the answers. Sky of Apparition into Brutal Cathar. Cathar, Cathar, whatever however you pronounce it. So, and this is until it leaves the battlefield. So let's go ahead, revitalize, draw a card. Let's go ahead and be smart about this actually. I'm gonna Lightning Helix when he declares attackers. So we can get the Rekindling Phoenix out to block Thalia's Lieutenant, I am going to hazard a guess. Go ahead, kill the Cathar, as long as he doesn't have protection or anything, please. Containment Priest. Sh sure. I'll take it. Why do you... Why, why are you exiled? When this creature ends the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. If an unsaved creature would end the battlefield and it wasn't cut. Oh, yo! Absolute giga brain Chad right here. He plays a containment priest so that when the brutal Cathar dies, the creature's gonna get exiled because it's entering the battle. Wow, I. I have, like, props to you, bro. That is some. That is some giga brain thinking right there. <laughs> he even knows it. Get the outlaw's merriment down. Just hold open the settler wreckage until everything gets a little bit. Oh my god! Bro has all of the answers! <laughs> all of the answers. If we can get this win, it is gonna be maybe one of the most satisfying wins of the day. If we drop this down, go to 11, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ooh, okay. Okay, so. Pass turn. Pass the turn. And, I mean, it's obvious that we have to settle the wreckage. I think unless you're... I mean, you got to be really quick to make sure you press uh, resolve on all these triggers so it doesn't look like you have an instant spell. But yeah, everyone always knows that you have uh, settled the wreckage normally. Thankfully, he didn't decide to play around it, so we can get rid of these things. He is going to thin out his deck a little bit with lands, which can, in the, you know, in the long term, be problematic for us. It's always definitely problematic against elves or goblins. Because as soon as you... Re they don't really run many lands to begin with, and as soon as you reduce the amount of lands in their deck, they tend to only really draw creatures and everything they need. Though at least we do have two... Four, one 4-4 four, four now. Yo, I'm gonna give credit to this guy. This dude has got the answers. He's got the moves. Again, same game... Actually gonna attack. Same game plan. Hold open Lightning Helix. So we can get rid of the Thalia's Lieutenant whenever he plays a human. And scry through. Do we want a board white? Just in case. I can keep it there just in case. Better safe than sorry. Another brutal Cathar. Can you actually exile this? Or is it non token? Oh. Does not really matter to the Cathar. Pass to attackers. Whenever it transforms. Do I care? Do I want to get rid of it? It's got ward of three life. Maybe I do care. Yeah, let's get rid of it. On the off chance uh, that it turning into night. And then back today. Comes back to bite us. Let's just get rid of it. He has uh, had some uh, very, very nice, very, 
Very nice draws. I'm just gonna, you know what? Get rid of this Thalia's Lieutenant. I want it out of the way. I want a clean board state for me to draw through to Sarah and uh, not have her attacked. Please and thank you. So I can... I was gonna say, is it worth... No. Strange it is, I'm not actually gonna foretell the Doom Scar. Just in case we draw through to something great and we want to drop that off to... We want to drop this Doom Scar off to see the spoils. Let's get rid of this land. Past the end of turn. We are going to take the one damage, but that is okay. So yeah, as you can see, this deck is pretty good at stalling out the game until you can eventually draw through to Sarah or enough Outlaw Merriments to win. Unfortunately, at the moment, we could definitely do with drawing some Revitalizers or just ideally what we need. Thank you very much, game. So yeah, see what I mean. It's night time now, so I'm glad we got rid of the Cathar. Um, we already have two Castle Arden Tales in play. Drop that off. Keep board wipe in hand, and hopefully draw through to something actually useful. Maybe game. Nope. Game's like you know what? I think you need some lands. That that seems the appropriate thing to, for you to have. So now I will actually foretell this because if we draw another Caesar spoils, I'm gonna drop off some lands. Not the biggest deal in the world. Though him being able to create one once each turn is going to be a little problematic. Do I care about Lightning Helix? I mean, I do care about it. It would be good in this situation, but I do want to draw through to Sarah. Because we're enough mana now that I can board wipe, play the Sarah, and as long as he doesn't have enough mana to Castle Adam Vale, we can emblem her turn afterwards. But who am I kidding? Let's just see. As long as we don't draw through to lands, we should be okay. Bruh. Alright, so, do I want to board wipe now is the question though, and the answer remains, no, no I don't, we're gaining two life, I can block the Cathar, Skyclave Apparition, nope, because we do have board wipe in hand, yeah, I mean I can negate a little bit of the damage as much as possible, create the one wants to be a blocker, gaining two life at the end of turn, so I'm only really losing one life if you will. That's a problem. Because as soon as we cannot play a creature now, as soon as the switch is back, he is going to be able to steal it again. Play your Spellbinder, my friend. Make my land cost two more. I'm very happy with that outcome. And now we are looking at board wiping time. Pass through to attackers. Go ahead. Make our 1 1 block so we're not losing. We're only losing 3 life instead of 6 life. And then board wipe incoming 100% of the time right now. The board state like this. Go ahead and drop the mountain that he knows is in, that we have in our hand. Awesome. Oh, bro, props to you, man. This guy has had every single answer imaginable. He's had the Cathars, the Fairies Protection, Giga Brain Containment Priest plays, like, hats off to you, my friend. Absolute hats off to you. Let's give you the, the Teferi emote as well, like, mm, no, no, no board wipes. Fairies Protection. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. That's okay. I don't think we have any other ways to cast spells aside from our hand. So, unfortunately, we are just gonna have to carry on chump blocking as best as possible. Hopefully another board wipe. Though who am I kidding? He's gonna have another he's gonna have another Teferi's protection in hand. Such a fantastic card. Oh man, I was gonna say hopefully we're gonna draw through a board wipe, <laughs> though I knew what I was gonna be drawing this turn anyway. Do we just lose? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. We're very close to losing though. Cosmos Elixir, absolutely putting in the work. Sarah, you are amazing, though do you actually do anything? I mean, as soon as this becomes day, when does it become day? Whenever an opponent plays two spells, it becomes day. Sarah, no, I'm going to keep Sarah there, because at least we can make the 4-4 and start trying to shoot down some of this stuff. Though we are not looking too great. I probably shouldn't have got rid of that, uh, what do you call it? Lightning Helix, because that could have taken care of the Cathar or the Spellbinder. Stop us taking three damage all of the time. I do think if I stop playing spells, I can activate this twice at least. Though, 
we're not we're not sat too pretty right now. It's a very cool card. I mean, like I get on paper, it's different from what's rares and what's mythics and everything. But I, it's one of those cards I don't think I would ever craft on Arena unless I played against enough decks that played cards not from their hand. I mean, I get, yeah, it works against a graveyard. Yeah, you can't play stuff from, yeah, I mean, you can copy spells from your graveyard. Very much true. So we're going to go up to seven. This can block this. This can block this. Still taking bits of damage. It's going to be pretty tight. It's definitely going to be tight whether we can win this one. I do wish we could get the emblem, because as soon as we have the emblem, we can just sit back and we're golden. And this would be the perfect example of a deck to use it against. Though, at least now, we are creating quite a bit of creatures from the Castle Arden Vale. From do what? Yes. I want you, because I want to get rid of the Elite Spellbinder, in case the Angel gets removed. Yeah, I mean, we can, creating, we can create tokens from Arden Vale, from Outlaw's Merriment. If we stop playing stuff, we can create two of these tokens each turn. And let's just see, Is I presume some of the attackers are going to go to Sarah, though we actually might just lose if he attacks with everything, right? Because he has amassed a good army of these of these soldier tokens. Attacking with everything, he's just fully ignoring Sarah. I get it. She really isn't that big of a threat in this current board state. So, oh, this has first strike. I need to block this. This needs to block this. This blocks this. And we're taking five, though at least we are getting rid of two of the attackers. Are we going to survive this? Wait, did I have lifelink? Why did I just get into life? I don't know. I have no idea. I saw a little animation. Maybe it's just a little visual bug. Is it best to act? Is it best to... So, if I do this... That still leaves, so I need five mana in total. So I need 10, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So I can create two one ones, or I can play this and create a one one. Go ahead and do this. Hopefully that was the wise play. So now we have four blockers. I really don't know if this is gonna be enough, to be honest. I'm gonna go ahead and attack. He does have vigilance as long as he doesn't have his own settle the wreckage or something. That would have been absolute. That would have absolutely nuked us. Probably not the best to have attacked. Though we need to get some pressure going. Seeing as we're on, oh, thank you. Seeing as we're now on four life, can we? Do we survive next turn? Uh, I think we might have lost. Um, my brain is not in the mind state to do the math at the moment, but we might have just lost anyway. Right, four blockers. Let's see. If he has insta speed removal for any of my creatures, we have lost 100%. Let's just see what we can get going. So this is going to block you. 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 And we take three damage. Okay, the blockers have been assigned. Nothing has trampled from his side. As long as he can't buff up his remaining three one ones, we can board wipe. And maybe, maybe stand a chance. <laughs> We're on one life. Uh, I like this opponent. He's playing a cool deck. He is a absolute lad with what he's been playing. Though we're slowly, slowly taking this Sarah up. Next turn, he probably should attack. I mean, he's, he probably should start trying to attack her. Kind of. Vanquish the Hood. Oh, bro, thank you. I mean, I was going to do the same thing. Nice, my friend. Very nice. Though I will give you the oops, because if you had have waited then uh, you could have done this when I played my Doomscar. Oh, okay, that's a pretty glorious feeling. He's going to board wipe, he's going to Teferi's... Oh, Teferi's protections until his next turn. Oh, bollocks. So, we can create two blockers. We're going to be on three life. We can block this, this, and another one. We're going to take two. Okay. Do I need to burn Sarah? Right, one second for math. I'm probably just going to skip this part. I'm going to plus Sarah. It seems so stupid, I know. I'm going to end the turn, gain the two life. Cosmos Elixir has never put in as much work as possible. I should have made an angel, then I would have lived. 
Now it's game, because we can block two things, and we're going to lose three. Good game, my friend. This has been good. This has been good. You've just had absolute god tier card draw. Absolutely everything possible against us. The fairy's protection. Go did. Oh, are you going to do weird attacks because you think I've settled a wreckage? Do it. Do it. Yes, my friend. Very nice. We, um, we actually could still be in for a chance. He's only attacking... He's attacking with three. One card in hand. Even if he can get rid of one of these creature tokens. I mean, he's playing around Settler Wreckage. It is smart of him. This guy is definitely a gamer. Though that has just cost him the game. Maybe? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy we didn't foretell this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm really happy we didn't foretell this. Otherwise, that would have absolutely tanked us. Your opponents can't cast spells from within the hand. And that's from Exile. So... Just gonna go ahead and board wipe, I think. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. So get rid of this. He can make a 1-1, though now, at least, Sarah. This is this is a bit of a long-winded game, but now Sarah is sitting on seven. We can still activate this. We're gonna go up to four HP. So we can at least block and next turn. We are going. Yes, I will 100% take Axis of Mortality, thank you. Now, our next turn, we're going to be able to Emblem Sarah, minus 6 her, so that we cannot take... Our life total cannot go below 1, as long as we control a creature, which, in theory, we always can do with this deck. I'm going to go ahead and pass to attackers. Unfortunately, we're not going to trade with the creatures. Uh, he's looking at it, and he's realizing he needs to get rid of it now. Just please don't concede until I at least can minus 6 her. Please, like, he's looking at this board state now, and I, I think, I think he might concede. Please don't concede, this has been such a great game. Such a great game, I don't want it just to, cause, well, we're like 18 minutes into the recording here. So, just don't concede. Go on, let, let, let me hit it. Minus six, we get the emblem. If we control a creature, damage that reduce our life total to less than one, reduces it to one instead. Drop down axis of mortality. We can still create creatures with Castle Arden Veil. Unfortunately, Cosmos Elixir working against our favor now because we want to have a, the lowest life total possible so that we can swap around with Axis of Mortality. Though I will not be blocking his attacks. This actually could be perfect. Are we, are we actually going to get the perfect win right now? We actually might get the perfect win changing his life to, with, to two life with Axis of Mortality and then being able to attack in with our creatures. All right, so go ahead, create my 1-1. One, one. Auto pay, I'll use the treasure, I don't mind. I'm, I'm, I'm super hyped now, actually. This would be the first time I've pulled the combo off with Axis of Mortality. I haven't won many games with this, but I will take this exchange. Take, oh, swap the life round. I'm onto 11, he's onto two, and then we can swing in for the win. Axis of Mortality, Sarah the Benevolent Emblem, for the win, thank you very much. You're seeing it as nice. It is very, very nice, my friend. You have one card in hand. Is it going to be Settler Wreckage? I really hope not, because this is a... Oh, I think I think we got him. I, good game, my friend. This has been... I, my, I don't know how to pronounce your name, you Gael. This has been an absolutely amazing match. Got the emblem off. Got Axis of Mortality down to swap him everything around. Exile up to one target attacking a blocking creature. That's not a problem. Oh, so he isn't losing. Okay, he's not going to lose this exact turn. But still, uh, we, we have it in the bag. We absolutely have this in the bag. I am very... I'm absolutely loving this. Go ahead and plus her for absolutely no reason at all. Drop a second Sarah just so we can make our 4-4. Four -four. Hopefully he doesn't draw a portable hole or something. And I think we got it. I do think, I dare say so, we might actually have it. We've got the emblem. We can swap lives around with Axis of Mortality, which we have done already. Put him on one life. You know, he's like, he gets me down as much as humanly possible. And then I'm like, nope. Quick little switcheroo. Good game. It really has been a good game. There is a perfect example of how this deck can work.